This one here, look. What are they?
at the little town of Dolva, Charles Rogers built a grand Victorian there top of the In Sydney, the port of which many of the immigrants and overseas groups arrived, businessmen such as David Jones and Anthony Corbyn and Joseph Farmer took advantage of the opportunity by consolidating retail and empire to the operations of the in the next section. We also made expeditions into Sydney and paid a visit to farmers, and I figured out the scope of some new farms which are bad on the dirt. The set of farmers is a most convenient place. It is an immense establishment divided into departments for everything. Rachel Penny, 1871. The gold rush had brought people from all over the world. There were few Chinese people in New South Wales before 1853. But by 1861, there were 13,000. The newcomers were hard working and different. Victoria, where many of the Chinese originally headed, had already restricted immigration from the Chinese. SAT may have been forced to travel from as far as South Australia to get to New South Wales. There were very few Chinese women growing in New South Wales. The Chinese women did establish relations with European women, sometimes as trade and government. Despite the hostility directed towards them, some Chinese men met and married European women. In 1864, Wong Sao married a Hindu Catholic. I don't know if the family knew them before I left. How long The Chinese abacus or swan pan has been an important tool for merchants for at least 700 years. It is a quick means of counting goods being brought, bought and sold and of calculating the cost. Abacuses often have had the owner's trading name on the back. This abacus was used to Sid, used to, in Sydney in about 1900. The owner's name is partially obscured. The legible character Wing means forever. 
Several Sydney businesses use this word in their name, such as Wing On and Company, Wing Wa and Company, Wing Hang T T I Y and Wing Wing Sung and Company. It does not have the owner thing in the back. So this is a lava rock. It's pretty much lava that becomes solid, so pretty much obsidian. And this is a magma rock. When the magma dries up, you can see it's orange here from because the magma was orange, like the lava. And this is where it dried off. You can see my shadow. We share our solar system with large rocks called asteroids and meteoroids. They usually disintegrate before impact, but some hit the Earth. 65 million years ago, a very big one slammed into Earth, throwing up enough dust and vaporized material to block out the sun. The global fires resulting from the impact would have produced large amounts of carbon dioxide trapping heat and raising temperatures. These meteorites fell on Australia. About 90% of all species became extinct 251 million years ago. Scientists think that temperatures rose as a result of carbon dioxide from volcanoes in Siberia, causing enough war enough warming to trigger the release of methane, methane gas from the ocean. This trapped more heat and created a feedback loop, making the planet hotter and hotter. Creatures with shells like these trilobites and amlonites were hardest hit. This suggests that the oceans were acidic. That turns them into salt. People survive climate change. This footprint was left near Lake Mungo in western New South Wales about 20,000 years ago. The lake was once covered about 135 kilometers and teamed with fish, yabbies, and mussels. Human skeletons and fossils confirm that the lake nourished Aboriginal people for at least 25,000 years. But around 14,000 years ago, the climate warmed and the lake dried up. People had to adapt and find food elsewhere. Lake Wango is now a dry lake bed, but the descendants of those early people live on. The poles on this plinth represent the amount of carbon dioxide in the air and the temperature in Arctic. Antarctica from 1750 to 1950. Carbon dioxide is measured in parts per million by volume, which means the number of units of carbon dioxide per million units of air. During this time, humans started burning vast amounts of coal, oil, and gas to generate energy for industry. Coal burning system engines were common by 1750 50, 50, electric motors by 1821, cars by 1908, and jet airliners by 1949. Ice at the South Pole contains air bubbles that are up to 800,000 years old. Snow traps are air bubbles. Snow traps air bubbles when it falls and it is compressed to form ice. Scientists have drilled 3,200 meters into the ice to sample air from ancient times. They found that carbon dioxide levels have gone up and down naturally in cycles of about 100,000 meters. Trees, corals, and limestone deposits in caves hold clues about ancient 
climate. Squirrels and trees can live for thousands of years. Each year's growth is recorded as a new layer or growth rate. The layers provide information about temperature, rainfall, and other environmental conditions at the time they were created. The growth rings incorporate materials from the surrounding surroundings and thus create a record of the environment's history.